If you look just behind me, you'll see the constellation Cassiopeia. And just off to the side of it, in a dark patch of sky, is the Andromeda Galaxy. Now when it comes to photographing deep space, the longer you can take a picture, the more detail you get to see. Which is why I took a photo for 10 seconds, 10 minutes, and 10 hours to see just what sort of detail we can reveal about this deep space object. Now, taking a photograph of a galaxy isn't as straightforward as grabbing your camera, pointing and shooting it. It's actually a lot more interesting than that, but we'll get to that in a moment. First, let's take a look at that 10 second photo of Andromeda that I took. And here it is. Sure, it may not be the most exciting photo until you realize you're looking at something that's two and a half million light years away. In US units, that's about 15 quintillion miles. That's a 15 with 18 zeros after it. Just in this picture, you're seeing more detail of Andromeda than classical astronomers could ever see with their eyes and telescopes. You can actually see the Andromeda galaxy with your own eyes. No telescope or binoculars needed. You just need to get far away enough from city lights to see it. Ancient astronomers called it the little cloud in the sky. Not knowing what they were looking at was an object that contained trillions of stars in it. Now, you've probably realized that this photo has no color. It's black and white. So where is the color? Well, to answer that question, we need to dive deep into how I'm taking these images. To capture these photos, I'm using my very own deep space imaging setup, which has a telescope, a camera, a tracking mount to follow the stars, and a bunch of different accessories. And the best part is, I'm not actually using it here where there's street lights and city lights causing all this light pollution. I'm actually using it up there. No, not up there in space. I don't have a space telescope, although that would be awesome if I did. I'm actually controlling it up there in my house from my office. You see, my telescope is set up a thousand miles from here in the middle of nowhere, Texas, where I control it remotely. And it's far away from city lights, free from light pollution, where I can get the best possible images. So with that in mind, let's head up to my office and take a look at that 10 second picture again, because I haven't been completely honest with you about that photo. So I have to admit, this image I'm showing you has been edited. When I get the raw data from my camera, it doesn't automatically turn out like this. I have to perform an edit, and in this case, I scaled the data, or what we called stretched the data. Now, an edited photo doesn't always mean that it's untrue or fake or anything like that, and let me explain. Let's use your phone as an example. When you take a photo with your phone, the images that you see aren't actually the raw, untouched images. Your phone actually edits the image for you automatically, and we'll touch on that later. But most of the time, pro photographers and astrophotographers prefer to edit the images themselves or manually to ensure they get the best possible results instead of letting an automated software do it for them. So let's take another look at that 10 second image of the Andromeda Galaxy, but this time let's look at it in the raw, untouched, unedited version. It's pretty dark, right? You can't see much. But that doesn't mean the galaxy isn't there. It just means that the computer screen doesn't know how to show it or display it properly in this raw form. And when we stretch the image, we're basically revealing what's already in the data. We're just making it more visible. This is the same thing that happens when you take a dark, underexposed image from your camera and you brighten it. So what happens if we stare at Andromeda not for 10 seconds, but for 60 seconds? Look how much difference there is between these two images. Look at the difference in the detail, despite only having the shutter open for 50 more seconds. It makes you wonder what we'll see when we do 10 hours. Again, this picture is still black and white, and no, the galaxy is not devoid of color. There's actually color in there. And we'll get to color in a second, but first, let's look at what happens when I zoom in on this image. You can see there's some graininess in this image, which we call noise, and we hate it because it prevents you from seeing more detail in your image. To combat the noise, we can take multiple images of that same target, so one after the other, and stack them together using software to average out all of that background noise. Take a look at what happens when we do that. This image isn't just a single one minute image, but 10 one minute images stacked on top of each other. Look how much better, how much cleaner it looks when compared to the single one minute image. Okay, now let's finally take a look at a color image of Andromeda. Now we're getting somewhere. We can start to see the hints of the yellows and reds near the galactic core. Individual stars now have their distinct colors. But how did we go from this image that's black and white to this colorful image of the galaxy? You see, all camera sensors are manufactured to only see in black, white, and gray. 
This sensor is made up of millions of tiny little light collecting buckets, which we call pixels. So where does the color come from? Well, let's use your phone again as the example. So when you take a picture with your phone, light is actually coming in and hitting one of your lenses and then it hits a sensor. But sitting on top of that sensor is a tiny grid of filters in a repeating pattern of red, green, and blue. And we call this a Bayer filter. Now, the Bayer filter's job is to make sure that only certain pixels capture only certain colors of light, red, green, or blue. And it makes sure all the other ones are blocked out. You could think of it as like a bouncer at a club, like I go to clubs anymore. <laughs> After the sensor collects this pattern of red, green, and blue light, your phone's built-in software uses an algorithm to mix all of the color data together, creating the full color image you see on your screen. Now, the camera that I'm using to shoot Andromeda doesn't actually have a Bayer filter in front of it. Instead, I select one filter at a time, either red, green, or blue, and this allows me to see more detail in the color that I choose to shoot. All of the images that I've been showing you all of the black and white ones at least, have been shot using the red filter. So all of the light you're seeing in these shots is the natural red color from space. But the images don't look red because as we mentioned before, camera sensors only see in black and white. And just like your phone, I have to take that image and tell a software that this light that you're seeing, this light is red light. So here's how I got the color image. In total, I've got three images, a 10 minute image through the green filter, a 10 minute image through a blue filter and the 10 minute image through the red filter that you saw earlier. And once I put all three of these images together, we get to see the subtle differences in each color in this image of the Andromeda galaxy. And if this is what we see with a 30 minute photo, what are we gonna see with a 10 hour photo? We'll get to the 10 hour photo in just a second, but I have to answer this question because I get asked it all the time. A lot of the times I'll talk about taking an image for 10, 20, or 40 hours long. But how is that possible if it's only night for a certain amount of time? Like there's obviously not 40 hours in a night. What it means is it's the total amount of integration time. So if I have 10 one minute images, that's a total exposure time of 10 minutes. And you're not limited to one minute. You could do five, 10, 20, 30 minute exposures if you want, and you can stack as many as you want. And you can do this over the course of a single night. You can take images over the course of a couple days, months, or even years. Okay, with that out of the way, let's take a look at what Andromeda looks like when you point a telescope and camera at it for 10 hours. When we pointed the telescope for 10 seconds, we could just start to make out these dark streaks but look what's revealed in the 10 hour photo. We can see the full extent of these lanes of cosmic dust hugging the outer edges of the galaxy. When we compare Andromeda's companion dwarf galaxy, we can see just how bright it glows. Distant galaxies hidden in the background and the noise of the 10 second image are revealed with our 10 hour photo. The brilliant blue colors in the outer rim of the galaxy caused by very large, very hot, blue stars bring the image to life. And all of those individual stars you see in this photo, all of those dots of light are contained within our own Milky Way galaxy, sitting between us and Andromeda. I love the colors from all the starlight, gas, and dust that blend together to create this object. Because Andromeda is not actually a solid object, but a collection of things, all gravitationally bound together, illuminating like an island in a cosmic ocean. Sometimes we forget how much we've come to know in such a short period of time. Humans have been gazing at the sky for tens, even hundreds of thousands of years, but it was only in the last hundred years that we realized what a galaxy truly was and what the actual size of the universe could be. Still, the more we discover about our universe, the deeper the mystery becomes. And I think that's why we love space. As kids, the world was filled with mysteries and magic that we believed was real. But as we get older, the magic fades away. However, the magic of space has never faded. The questions it provokes leads us to deeper questions that we easily forget about in our everyday lives. Like, where did we come from? Is there anyone else out there in the universe? Or are we all alone?